Welcome back to Jack's Tech Corner. Or if you're new to the show, then hello and welcome to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host Jack, and this is going to be a video tutorial on setting up Windows 2008 Server RC2. Now, if you've never used a Windows Server before, which probably is pretty unusual of why you may be watching this, but if you work in an office, maybe you want to set up a server for your clients in your office maybe you're elected to be the IT guy so this is kinda of who these shows are more directed towards or if you're an IT guy hey maybe I'll show you a couple little uh, steps here and a couple of ideas that maybe you didn't know about so what I did first was I installed Windows Server 2008 R2 alright this is a release 2 and first thing you want to do is this window is going to come up initial configuration tasks now the first thing we have to do is activate windows which I've already done I've activated my windows and you'll do this by getting the key code off of the CD or the DVD that you install windows with with the windows server and uh, you'll be able to install uh, and activate let me just briefly talk just a little bit about your Windows Server. I've installed Windows Server on some pretty unusual computers. One client in particular that I can remember, um, we've designed a whole system for this client, and the client decided on the last minute to run out to a local um, retail store and actually purchase computers. So he bought seven e machines, six was for his workers, one he dubbed the server. He wanted us to install at that time, we installed Windows 2000 server on it. But we managed to do that. The key element with a server is not particularly a large computer in a rack. Um, it is basically a computer running server software. That's what makes it a server. And as we go through these videos, I'm going to discuss more and more on what the server is actually doing to serve out uh, different configurations to the user, what we can serve the user. So I think that's really important for you to understand. But typically today what we're going to talk about is just how to configure the server itself. So you purchased a computer, like I said, primarily remember RAM. The more RAM and the more hard drive space you can afford purchase that. I don't like to set up any storage for any users under one terabyte of total storage space so I know I have room and have that set up so we can put another hard drive in and reconfigure that so you never want to run out of space. The thing I found over the years is space is taken up pretty rapidly by your users. The second thing is RAM. As a server is being hit through the day by more and more users you're going to need more and more random access memory. So now that we have that done, we have that consideration, and we installed Windows Server uh, 2008 R2, we're ready to start configuring. The first thing we want to go through here and look at is we want to set up a time zone. This is our time zone setting. And I'm sure you know the time zone that you actually live in. Mine is set to uh, Eastern Standard Time because we're in the Eastern Standard Time Zone check the clock to make sure the clock is set to your uh, local time I usually like to confirm this with my cell phone because I feel that the cell phone providers do a really good job with local time so make sure that that is set up you can load additional clocks you can display additional clocks and you can have different time zones showing if you wish and then there's internet time you can automatically uh, set this up, which it is automatic. This computer is set up to automatically synchronize with time.windows.com. Or you can change these settings and you can sync it up to any server that you may have acting as your time server in your rack, which you probably do not at this point. So let's just leave it set to that. Click apply and OK. The next is configure the networking. This is also very important. A lot of people miss this step. When you first install Windows Server, it's going to look at your network and it's going to pick up an IP address. Now, if you're not familiar with an IP address, what that basically stands for is Internet Protocol Address. The way I like to explain this to folks is, just like your house 
or your cell phone having an individual phone number, every computer or printer or device on your network must have an individual IP address. This is basically its identifying address on your network. No two devices can have the same address because they will conflict. The one device, the, uh, the network card will actually shut itself down and will not activate and then you won't get it on the network. The thing to remember about a server is the server must have a static address. And we'll look at that down the road as we're doing more with these servers and actually setting it up and configuring it so you can actually use it. So it must have a static address. Static means we're going to set the address on the server itself. So we'll right click this and we'll go to properties. Now there is a new IP6 which I don't know anybody out there right now that's using IP6. Maybe you are which is fine. Most people are still using the old familiar IP4. Hit properties and this is where we can automatically assign it. Now I don't know your network. The best thing I could tell you to do is go to one of your computers if you have internet access on your computers and if you have a router currently so you have a router running what I want you to do is um, basically go to that and I'll try to put some slides up here or something to show you how to go through that but you have to know the IP address of your network the scheme so you would go to that computer and you would simply click on start and then click on run and then type in CMD and what that gives you is a command prompt Here's your command prompt. Now you want to type in IPCONFIG. IPCONFIG. Hit enter. What this will give you here is it will give you the IP address. Ethernet local adapter. And you can see an IP address. Now this is running on a virtual machine so this address is kind of unique in its own self but we want to make sure that this computer and I haven't tried this yet with with parallels desktop here but what I want to do with this virtual machine is I want the IP address to be the same scheme as my network in my house so I'm going to see if I can do that I'm not sure if it's going to work but you'd write down this address of the computer where you're at and then what I would suggest to do the server would be 10.22 or 211 .55 one. I like to make my servers dot one because I know it's the first um, device on my network. It's the most important device that should receive a number one. Make sure you know your subnet mask 255.255.255.0. What that tells me is that there is 253 usable addresses on my network. So I have 253 usable addresses. The default gateway 10.211.55.1 so if this is dot one now see I told you make that dot one without looking this is the gateway so this is the router basically on your system so at that point I would make my server dot two because you don't want two addresses to be the same but what we're going to try and I don't know if it's going to work so bear with me is we're going to give this an address to my actual network 1.2 because I know my router is dot one then here we're going to do 192 168 1.1 1 .1. next it's very important for the server to be able to see its own DNS server and we'll talk about DNS and DHCP and what that means but for now we're just going to make this primary DNS server the same address as the top one here. 192.168.1.2 The alternative DNS number, we've just over the years started using um, what's called open DNS. It's 208.67.222.222. I would recommend that you look into open DNS. It's absolutely free. and you can use it for your company as a web filter so it's, it's great as a basic web filter it keeps uh, the workers on task let's click OK 
Now, like I said, I don't know if this is going to work out for me or not. So we'll click close. It's trying to identify itself on my network. And I don't know, like I said, um, undefined, uh, it's unidentified network. We'll look at our IP config one more time. And you can see it is now 192.168.1.2. There is my subnet mask, which is a class C network, and my default gateway. Let's close this out. The real trick is, is do I have internet and access sorry, at this folks, point? Bear with me here. If not, I'm going to have to rethink how to use parallels on here. Add uh, Google. There. So now we do have internet access. So we will work through that. It's going to be a connectivity issue. But just remember I told you to set your networking connections. This is only having trouble because this is running a virtual machine and a program called Parallels on my Mac. We're going to close that. Next you're going to provide a computer name and a domain. Computer name and domain. We're going to leave it on the work group right now, but we are going to change the computer name. Make this computer name something that you can live with. You're going to be typing it a lot. It's going to be something that you're going to be using a lot. So make sure you type it correctly. Hit change. We don't want it to be the default name. We are going to change this to um, for, for anything easier right now. I'll make it home server. So this is a name. This is not the domain name yet. We'll talk about domain names and what that means. This is just strictly a computer name. And my work group at home, I always use a home group. I just change that from the default. Click OK. And welcome to the home group. You must now restart your computer. OK. Let's close this. Uh, we'll restart it later. All right, the next important tasks are says enable automatic updating and feedback. We want it to be enabled. We want automatic updates. Download and install updates would be another thing. We're going to check for updates and update your server. That would be the next steps. Now, so this video doesn't get too long because I rambled on a little bit, I'm going to stop this particular video on setting up Windows Server 2008 R2, and then we'll come back and we'll start talking about roles and features and enabling remote desktop and what does that mean for you um, and configuring the Windows firewall. So I will see you back here very soon. Uh, by the time you come back, my server will be restarted, and hopefully you're working along with me so you can be restarting your server also. So once again, I am Jack. This is Jack's Tech Corner, and this is Windows Server 2008.